look around the garden and I notice that you really need to have some compost incorporated in your system. And I spoke to Joe and he said, well, he doesn't have anyone to turn the compost. And I understand that because I'm not good at turning compost either. So I've got two methods that I've been using for 20 years or more. And I do have about 11 compost bins and I need them. And I also have a garden mate, which is something that you can buy from shops and they're like this. Oh yeah. That's a circle that she goes like that. So you you put that into your bin and it spirals down. And then if it's too heavy you lift it back up and give it a shake and that lets the air in. Now, most, the best compost bin, I don't know, I've got about three or four varieties. Four varieties. The, the best one is a dialect, because if you put it on a mesh underneath, the rats can't get it. Because it hasn't got any holes, it's just solid. If they've got holes, the rats can actually chew holes. Mm. I've got one at home that had the holes in it with vents on it, and they just push the vents out. And if they're too big, they just make the hole a bit bigger to get out. So, <coughs> a solid compost bin on a wire base keeps the rats out. And I put uh, everything in there, um, milk, cheese, meat, everything. Mm. And it makes fantastic compost. But you really do need to turn. And you really need to add a lot of manure. Dry it, not manure. Don't put manure in. Don't put what in, sorry? Don't put manure in. Yeah. There's a bit of thought now that it actually has pathogen in it if it hasn't been composted before. So you can so get it with a bit of uh, blood and bone if you're unsure or not working. But usually um, it'll work on its own. And if you do the kashi, you know the kashi? It's in the bin with the, it's airless and you sprinkle a, a cashew mix on. If you add that to compost bin, wow, it just, it's magic, it just happens. It just, the microbes in it just eat everything and it makes fantastic compost. But cashew? Now you can pay $100 for them or you can make a cashew bin yourself with two nappy bins. Nappy bins have a, a now a lid on top that uh, stops the air from getting in. So the first bin with the lid, you poke a few holes in the bottom, drill usually, and put that into the next bin. And what happens is uh, the juices from the top one run into the bottom one, and you can save it, mm. use it, or whatever. I usually dump mine back in the compost. Mm. So, they're really two good ideas for people who live in units and that. And if you've got that, you can bring it here and put it in the compost here. How often do you, with the turning gadget, how often would you do that to aerate? Of what? To aerate. The, this one? Yeah. Oh, only when it looks like it's packed down. Mm -hmm. You know, when it gets down about half full. It was, and, and it's important not to put big stuff in keep it small so that you can actually get into it. And what I do is I go in the middle and I go all the way around the outside and you can actually pull it up and put the stuff on the bottom and the top. A bit of experience. Makes fantastic things. And I, I've got seven at the moment going down one side and as soon as they're ready they go into the garden. I've got about seven or eight uh, raised garden beds. So I use that twice a year to top all of them up with compost mm. and it shows it really does. The other thing is I have bananas and other big stuff so I made this it's it's a wire that you've got around it I think it's two inches square and you form it into a loop like that two to three loops it's handy to have the extra because if it gets too full, you can just give it a shake and make it bigger. So in the middle is a, a, a pipe that holds all the way through. And a star picket in the middle to hold it there. 
and then you put the wire around and you put shake cloth or weed, weed matting or something on the outside. So what is that in the middle around the star picket? That is a pipe. A pipe. A PVC a pipe. pipe. Do you say like a 50 mil pipe yeah, or something? With, yeah, with holes drilled all the way down. Now what happens is, and, I, and the other thing I put uh, a roll of egg pipe, five inch, one, 150, um, with a sock on it. Now, it's the egg pipe has got holes in it all the way around, and the sock covers that so the soil doesn't get in and fill the pipe. Uh -huh. So it lets air in on the bottom, and then it gets sucked up through here, through the, the pipe. And because this is in the middle, the, the waste, you know, you, you compost and stuff, it's only about that far away from here. So it's getting aerated from the bottom, from the middle and from the sides. So sorry, where's the water coming from? The uh, egg pipe you're saying? Okay. Yeah, the egg pipe, sorry, I should have drawn that in. The egg pipe, I'll put it in the very bottom before I start making it. And the whole principle is air. Yeah. That's what, that's what the whole thing's about, and getting the air inside. Slots in it, and then the sock goes over it. It's like a fabric. It just stops the, the soil from getting into the egg pipe. Sorry, what, what was that? Egg pipe? Yeah, it's a, it's a, a pipe, pipe. Um, a drainage pipe. Yeah, Agricultural like with, with the, slats. Yeah, and, and it's got ridges all the way along it as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Keep it moist. And mine usually go six months. And I don't have to turn it. I just unhook the latch on the side, and they out. And there's six barrel loads of compost in them. And it's... You can actually put wood chips in there too because it's over a long time. So I have before put wood chips, but not real fresh ones. If you can get a bit of age, they're better. And when you get it out, you, it's all connected. It's got a, a thing in it called columnar, which aggregates everything together. And that is what, that is magic in compost and in, in humus. So it's up to humus. Mm. Now there's only two things that holds a nutrients, and it's humus or it's clay. Now humus holds all the nutrients, clay doesn't hold them all. So this is just amazing stuff, and you really need to have it in your garden. If your <coughs> potting mix or whatever is too fine, you need to, uh, what they call it is aggregation. It makes it, all those fine particles join together and that opens up the rest of it, opens the pores and lets the water through. So if you can have your compost on top and mix it into the top layer, that will actually give you aeration uh, that through. Any questions? Yes. So the clay, does that like clump and concentrate the compost juices in, into the unsoluble clay pieces that it eventually breaks down? It's, yeah, humus doesn't break down. Yeah. Or it can take years or thousands of years. Has anyone heard of terra preta mm. in South yeah. America? Terra what? Preta. Terra preta. Yeah, it's where the, the natives in the Amazon. Terra preta. Terra preta. Terra preta. Yeah, yeah. 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 you know what soil, it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's made with um, burning trees and probably putting all their rubbish in the same spot and maybe human manure, I don't know. No one really knows. But it makes this fantastic soil or humus that hasn't broken down for thousands of years. And it's in, it's increasing. It grows into the other soil around it, and it all goes black. Really? It's fantastic. Yes. Like it's inno oh, inoculating, inoculating the soil around it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, so it's, it's, putting it's, it's all burnt. about microbes. Yeah. The microbes are there that it's formed that, and they're growing and they're going into the other soil. 
because they're looking for food. Yeah, and, and how are they creating that? How are they creating with, that? Uh, putting timber in, burning it, putting all their eggshells and all their rubbish and greens, I suppose. And, and those days they were burning um, the trees to make room to grow more plants. And so that was all in that heap as well. It's, it's not official, but to me it seems like they had the throne room, as in you know the morning constitutional throne room, and they just kept moving the throne room um, because the the the, um, the pieces that they would make would be circled, yeah. and it was yeah, like. It could have and been they're about six foot deep. It could have and been pits. And if you put all your wood ashes yep. and you put all of your like the rubbish chip. Uh. And, and <laughs> instead of cutting the whole tree down, if you take all the branches off and you create charcoal, yeah, with yeah. those branches, and that's it. That makes it black. It's yeah. charcoal, and, you know, you and we know. call it rubbish. But in those days, it's yeah. all the nutrients yeah. and all the things that will continue to make their garden richer into the future. That's how people used to think, you know, seven generations ahead at least. Slash and burn, yeah, well, that's well no, thing. it's more slash and burn now than it used to be. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure, yeah. definitely. That's, that's what I'm saying, Joe. If, if they don't cut the actual tree itself, yes, they cut that's all right. branches, mm. it works similar to the slash and burn. They that's make use of the it. Mm. So in the years that it takes for those branches to grow again, yes. mm, you've got that use of that soil. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then you can go back and you can you can reharvest all those side branches and go again. So and like if with the expanding population they would have had to move and do that very soon. Sure. To slash and burn. But then when they were burnt that they would have put everything in. There's even shards of pottery and all that in there. So yeah. Um it's on what the Mayans did and they settled sort of a, an acreage and they would grow stuff there under the trees and it all was tropical vegetables that and then they stay there for about three years and then they move on to the yeah. next one yeah. and then the next one and then the next one and then come around to this same one in about 10 years from mm. yeah. and so the fertility is built up mm. after all yeah thinking yeah. ahead so mm. it's it's not all in one place it's Keeping yeah. Any more questions? I, I was going to say um, that you've got a lot of compost bins there. How do you keep filling them? What do you fill them with? Because how many people are living there? Um, two. Two people and how many compost bins? Yeah, I've got seven along seven. the side and three others in the garden. Yeah, so um, how do you do that, Carol? You do have cuts and things when you from the garden, wouldn't you, or the leaf and the leaf? Yeah, um, I grew three patches of bananas and there's a lot of banana in them. I also use banana leaves for pathways, stop weeds from growing. Mm. What, what I'm always that? cutting shrubs back and then, yeah, um, I grow a lot of things in pots so some of them die, that goes in. I used to grow a lot of pots, I used to supply the shop at, at Stockholm and then I had mates in them. Shoulder, so I couldn't do much for about two years. So quite a lot of those pots are in my comfort um, with the potting mix and all. And so, yeah, it's when I cut back um, the flowering things that I've got, they all go in the compost. Mm -hmm. The sweet leaf goes in the compost. Yeah. Um, sweet potato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have trouble filling them. Yeah, great. And of course, household scraps. If you yeah. grow your own greens, then you've got all the outside leaves. And, uh, yeah. and tomatoes finished, the tomato bush goes in. My tomato bush is this high. And <laughs> it's only supposed to be here. <laughs> but I've made a bed and I've put two compost bins in the soil. Stand yeah. back. <laughs> so it's magic. It's magic size. Compost. That's the story. Yes. <laughs> so this here, I, I, I didn't really this, this quite get it. What are we doing this? This is for another system of composting or to make peat, uh, not peat, what was it? Mm. Uh, Pumice. 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 Compost and humus. Humus, yeah. yeah. So this is like you've got a roll of wire and yeah. you wind around yeah. two or three times. Yeah. And then tie it. Yeah. Yeah. And then you put the star picket with the pipe in the middle. Yeah. 
and then oh, put shade, shade gloss around the outside. the outside. And then just start filling. Right, and the egg pipe underneath the egg with the stocking. Yeah. So initially you said something about this to do with the bananas that you grow. You said I grow bananas and then you yeah, started talking about... I put chunks in like this. Right, okay. No. So that's a slower you breakdown don't, system. Yeah, I don't chop them up. Like right. Big chunks. Okay. I just wanted to know the purpose of the pipe in the middle with the holes in it. Letting it actually cause it to drown from the bottom up to the back. And put it back down. How does the draft get in there? Because you've got pipe at the bottom with it. And you've got that outside so that it allows her to get underneath and then up through the centre. Yep. Genius. 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 It's changed from the sand. Mm. My purple trees just come up on their own and they, 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 the soil is just made to ruin it. So I have to be careful with what I do. That's wild. Yeah. It, yeah, and that's. I never really make anything to go off this property at all. I either use it as on the walkways or to mulch over garden beds that I'm not using. I've actually used a lot of comp uh, cardboard. Mm -hmm. and I, at the moment I'm covering up the leaves everywhere with cardboard and then I will get the bale hay with it so I'm not trying to put it in. So, yeah. Oh, and the other new invasion was. Um, like the Gola trellis. It's a three metre long um, garden bed with a poly pipe over the top as an arch. So there's three arches going three metres up high and the dog wire over the top. And I'm growing a zucchini squash that grows, you know, 1.2 metres long. Wow. It can hang down. Amazing. Tomatoes can go for as long as they like, up and over. Um, cucumbers, so this is snake beans. Eggplant, three, three arches. Yeah, it's, this is polypot, you know. Polypot, poly 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 sorry. Yeah, two inch polypot. Yes. And you put that into two um, shell pickets. Yes. Six of them. Put the polypot over. Yes. And you need to stabilise the size with the uh, fatness and then the dog and dog and that makes it the huge spec 2.6 wide you've got two garden beds underneath and one on the side and because it's on the south side the sun doesn't come up there so you don't have any shadows so the sun is on that bed all the time because everything needs um, yes. Can I ask a question about animal manure? Animal manure. Yep. You're saying you're always a bit controversial now going into the compost bin. Is that all animal manure or just... Yes. Okay, so yeah. do, like I, I use a deep litter system. Yeah, well that's probably okay. Yeah. So I, I put that onto, onto the garden beds. I love it yeah. in the compost. It's mainly cow manure that they were worried about. Cow? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've just been introduced to guinea pig poo and they reckon that's brilliant. So I, I don't know. Yeah. So I was just impressed okay. with what you said. Yeah, yeah I, I'd use it, but I'd, I'd shy away from the cow manure. I've never used cow goats yet. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Pigs probably too wouldn't be for my eyes. Yeah. I don't know that any should, should be used unless they sit on can't all first. Yeah. All mm. with, with, your, mean, with, with your animal, um, with your animal compost, what I found, maybe I haven't broken it down enough, but when I put things like that into my garden, all it seems to do is attract ants, <laughs> and I end up with like colonies of ants in, in amongst my gardens, and they're very painful when you're digging around your gardens. That so I've tended to move right away from animal byproducts at all, and just 
just go the green side of things. Okay. Mm. Yeah. But well, that, I've got quails, so I just use a deep lid every quails and let it break yeah, down. The and eggs, just, it's a, the eggs might be a bit attractive to feed that's left in what you put in I don't do, I never feed my birds any cabbage scraps. It's all fresh out the no, garden. Just even yeah. seeds, you know, if you're feeding seeds to you. Oh, no. um, so you've got one urban block. Yes, with a house on it. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're growing in your yard and so what how would you describe your food output from what you're it's growing? It's enough to feed me. Yeah. yeah. But you also were supplying the shop earlier as well? Oh, at the moment I've got carrots. That's it. And the other two carrots. Oh, two zucchinis. Brian zucchinis, I'm growing capsicum. I don't know about carrots. <laughs> My last one's are about this can big. I, can I ask you, Carol, how much of your suburban sort of block is designated to growing food? What percentage? Um, 75% because I've got a really good front yard full of pentas and flowers and, <laughs> ah. and um, the Zenith spinach is a brown colour. Oh yes, yeah. and it's beautiful because of the diversity in that patch which is probably yeah, about that big spice. There's all sorts of different plants. Actually, here. could you, if we've got time, give us more um, uh, examples of good ground covers, like Brazilian spinach, that's a great idea. Sambang. Which one? Sambang. Yeah. Sambang. 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 That grows from Alcanoa. cuttings. I'll get, I'll get that off the way. Alcanoa yeah. spinach. Sambang. Oh, sorry. Sambang and Alcanoa. I'll use the Okinawa spinach. It's very similar to Sambal. You'll be able to trees. see it here. Okay. Um, Sambal is out in the sun. Okinawa okay. needs a bit of shade. Um, Queen of all herbs is a really great ground cover underneath yeah, fruit yes, trees. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is that queen or mother? Mother of all herbs? Mother of all herbs, yeah. I didn't think that was a ground cover. Well, it, it, it can yeah. climb up, but it, it'll just yeah. grow along, and if it climbs up, you can just snap it's it off and put it down. Too, isn't it? It's very hardy. Very hardy and doesn't need much to grow at all. It gives you much more than it takes, that's for sure. It's good on pizzas and hamburgers. Yes, anything that you would normally use mixed herbs for. And it makes a really good tea. If you don't have a very good sleep, you can have a tea. And apparently, it keeps snakes away. So many things that grow. Yeah, it's a, it's tea. Keeps, apparently it keeps snakes away. Yeah. Although you'd have to tell that to my rest of the He might like it. He might just be... No, I've never seen him in it, but I have one. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that might be the sleepy okay. bit. It might keep him restful. <laughs> well, he hasn't bitten yet, so... Yeah. So what were they? Cocoa, yeah. Cocoa, yeah. Cocoa, yeah. Has anybody got cocoa yams here? Hey? Anybody got cocoa yet? Yeah, there there? is some around somewhere. So, so well, well, let's have a look at, at these things afterwards, yes? yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so you can grow, for carbohydrates, you can grow cocoa yam, taros, and then there's heaps of different taros. And sweet potato. Mm. Cassava? Cassava. And cassava, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, Arum. cassava go out of control, so. This is why it's here. <laughs> Really? And chop and drop, chop and drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Cut and drop, and they just come right back. Compost um, pile. <laughs> so I've got about seven greens. Um, uh, amaranth is really good in the summer. Um, there's two, at least two sorts of leaf, one that's a red and green. But then the seed one, you can grow the seed. Um, That's the same can, one they have for cereal, yeah? Yeah, like the seed yeah. amaranth. Yeah. Yeah. It's so quite a few colours, yeah. Different, yeah, the different the versions. Fruiting part, well, of more or less capsicum, chilies, what else? Zucchinis. Zucchinis are really different. Yeah, they give um, white powder and they give very fine. 
so that's why I'm, I built the trellis to grow up so it gets the breeze. Because yeah. um, look in the back garden, it's the vertical, so it's all off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I've got the to come up along yeah. the fence, so yeah. really nice. And then there's the herbs. I mean, it's a big girl, bunching shallots, you go out and you just chop them off the ground level and they'll grow back. Mm. So you will forever have bunching shallots. So you get some of them and you get some of your um, garlic chives and chop them all up into about this big, um, chop up carrot, capsicum um, and a bit of tahini and you've got to stir fry. Yeah. What was that you want other bit? Meeting? The last thing? Uh, zucchini. Zucchini, oh. Yeah, mm. so that's why I'm growing this big line. <laughs> Do you like the loofahs, the small loofahs? Um, I don't really have time, place to grow such right. things. Right. Or but the small loofahs are more the like, and yeah, no, the easy. small loofahs are like a mix yeah, between yeah. zucchinis and cucumbers. Yeah, I reckon they would make good pickles as well. Uh, no, they were, um, <laughs> I've got six neighbours, hmm? so uh, no one wants anything growing on the fence. They're no fun. I have a new fence, it's a metal one, and I'll put mesh up on that, mm. so I grow beans on that. Mm. Um, mm. And I'll be growing beans over this big one. Mm. So I, that's the problem. Mm. Um, confined to what you've got. Yeah. I used to have a driveway that went right to the back of the block, and now it's about a third of the way. <laughs> What's your page called? designing a system to make it good, you know, for you. Mm. So this is sort of what this is and what trellis is and where you can plant your things in your garden, where's the best place for everything. Um, they also do um, children's, you know, even putting swales on the property to get the water on or off. Where's the swale? <laughs> swale. It's like a ditch. On yeah. the contour so that it catches the water or lets oh, the water out. Yeah. yeah. So have a look. We do have a website. It's permaculturecans.org. Um, we'd like the person who does computers. So. Oh, oh, there, but I have been doing a, a newsletter for Oh, but, uh, since 2017, I have a gardening section in it on what to plant and what to do. So, so, anybody cans. that's good on computers that wants to help permaculture cans out, they're needing some help on the computers. Where? What do I see here? I see. Permaculturecans.org.au. Okay, I'll find you. I think I might have already liked and followed, but. I do put a lot on. on <laughs> Yeah, there's Cairns Gardening Club, yeah, and there's another gardening club, and I'm going to go another one in a month. That's, I think it's Lumbalos, Lumbalos. All right. I think they're having a meeting at Aragon. Any questions for Carol, or any last things you'd like to share, Carol? Well, thank you, Sherry and Lodge. It's been really good. I'm really interested in the tropical beach. And I do have some here, but I haven't done much to it for a long time. You have so, some what? I have an updated. Uh, oh, is this the some foods? Cool. Yeah. You can take. Yeah.